Hey guys, it's Dinkle Dork here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create custom weapons as well as import custom appearances for set weapons. So let's get started. There's really only two things you need, an SQL editor and DBC editor. Heidi SQL tends to be the easiest program for new people and it's free. So go online and find a link for that one and download it. You can find it through an easy Google search. I'll leave links in the description for DBC editor. For step one, we're going to start our MySQL server and the version of the game we want. You'll have a menu that looks like this. If you don't know what your host name, user, or password is, usually that is included in the repack or somewhere in the information schema if you compiled your own server. The table we are primarily going to be concerned with is called item template. And you can find this by opening your world database and looking at the tables there. Click on item template and make sure you go to the top of your screen for the data tab as that's where we're going to be inputting all this information. It's a good idea to think about the type of item you want. If you want an item from a custom skin or a model backported from a later expansion, the process is more involved. I highly recommend you duplicate existing items rather than creating items starting from zero. From here, we're going to find a corresponding item with a model we like. Remember, you can sort tables by column by clicking the first column of your choice. If you want to search alphabetically, then you would sort by name. And if you wanted to sort by ID, you would sort by entry. You may also need to click this show all button here on the right hand side or go into your preferences, grid formatting, and increase the maximum amount of rows that you can see. I'm going to go ahead and select Manslayer of the Karaji since I like that model. It has an entry number of 21492. You have two choices at this point. You can either edit the existing item or you can duplicate the item by right clicking on the row and choosing duplicate row with existing keys. I'm going to choose the latter. I won't go into every little detail about what every entry does, but if you want an explanation of what each column does, you can visit the link I post in the description. It'll look something like this. Here you can search every field and learn a little bit more about what each thing does. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this entry number to a number that doesn't exist already. So I'm just going to go with 300,000. After that, I'm going to change the quality to 5. This number will make the item a legendary. 0 means that it's poor quality, 1 common quality, 2 uncommon quality, 3 rare quality, etc. Next, I'm going to go ahead and change the stats. Use the reference guide linked in the description to see which stat type corresponds to what number. I'm going to increase the strength 4 from 35 to 45 and remove the agility 3 altogether and zero out those cells. So basically we are looking for the stat type column. If you're on Wrath of the Lich King, make sure that you include the number of stats that are on the weapon itself, but for vanilla you do not need to include a stat count as that column doesn't exist. I'm also going to go ahead and switch the stat count to 2, otherwise the weapon might display some error information. If you're curious about what number 7 is, that is the stamina on the weapon. I'm going to scroll over now to change the actual damage of the weapon itself. And this is located at damage min 1 and damage max 2. By default, most weapons damage type is set to 0, meaning it's physical damage but I'm also going to add to damage min 2 and damage max 2 and change the damage type 2, which is shadow, by setting it to 5. After messing with these values, now my weapon will do both physical and shadow damage. I'm going to scroll over again to armor. Here, if I wanted to, I could make it so the weapon gives me some sort of armor, kind of like a tanking Death Knight weapon or something of that nature. To the right are a few resistances you can add as well. I'm going to go ahead and add 5 resistance to the weapon all across the board. Further to the right is the delay column. This is just the swing timer reflected in milliseconds. It's saying that it swings every 3.6 seconds. I'm going to leave that the way it is, though you can easily change that as well. 
Now we're getting to the fun stuff. The spell ID section are where you can put custom effects on the weapon. I really want to make this a paladin weapon, so I'm going to add spell power to the weapon. This is essentially how you would modify spell damage in vanilla. In Wrath of the Lich King, you can actually modify it through the stats, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and do it through spell ID 1. The best thing to do about figuring out what values you can put for spell damage in vanilla is to go ahead and go to a database website for vanilla itself, and then search for the term spell dam. This will pull up a whole list of different ranges of spell damage that you can actually apply to the weapon. So I want to add 23 spell power to the weapon, so I'm going to go ahead and search for that. The ID that I'm concerned with is going to be up here at this link, and it's the last few numbers after the equal sign. The number is 14047, so I'm going to add that to spell ID 1. I'm going to go ahead and change this spell trigger to 1, which means I'll get this passively when I equip the item. 0 means an on-use effect, 2 means a chance on hit. And those are the primary ones that you'll probably be concerning yourself with. Next, I want to have another spell proc when I hit things on occasion. So I'm going to go over to spell ID number two. I'm actually a pretty big fan of chain lightning, so I'm going to look up the ID for chain lightning rank four, which is 10605, and insert it into the cell. Under spell trigger two, I'm going to switch this value to 2, and I'm going to move over to the spell PPM rate section, and I'll change this to 2.5, meaning that this effect should theoretically proc 2.5 times a minute. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and give it an on-use effect in spell ID 3. I want to be able to buff me or someone with a Loon's Blessing, which is basically a 10% stat increase for a few minutes. So I look for the spell ID, which is 26393 and insert it into the cell. I leave the spell trigger as zero and change the spell cooldown to 3,600,000, which is one hour in milliseconds. So now I can use a Loon's Blessing every one hour. And that's a basic guide to making custom items in WoW. I could go ahead and mess with item level if I wanted to, and minimum level requirements as well. Say, if I wanted to actually equip this on a level 1 character, I would just probably switch this to 0. For TBC and Wrath, if you scroll further to the right, you can actually put your gem slots in the weapon as well, choosing the colors and socket bonuses if you so desire. Again, refer to the wiki page of your particular server for what number corresponds to what gem. If you're lucky enough to be playing vanilla, that's pretty much all you have to do. But if you play TBC and Wrath of the Lich King, there's one additional step left for you. And that's to patch the item in on the client side. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the DBC editor and go ahead and find the item DBC in our server core. Your DBC file should look something like this. Cameras, DBC, maps, and maps, vmaps. After we've opened the item DBC, we're gonna go ahead and look for the Manslayer of the Karaji ID on the left-hand side, which corresponds to the same item template ID in your SQL folder. And for me, it was 21492. Right-click this column and select Copy Line 2. Make sure that this ID matches your ID of your new custom item as well. After that's done, we're just going to go to the top left and hit Save and exit out. Next, we're going to open up Vladix MPQ Editor. Hit Open MPQs at the top left, and we're going to navigate to our data folder. 
There are a number of MPQs listed in your data folder. Which one you use is really dependent on which expansion you're playing and whether or not you have custom MPQs already installed. For me, this is actually going to be patch Z, but for you, it will most certainly be something different. Just look around until you see a folder that says DB Files Client. There may be additional folders on the drop down menu, but the one we're concerned with is DB Files Client. Go ahead and click Add Files, which is the green plus sign at the very top. And we're going to go ahead and pull from our DBC the item DBC and import it into this section of our MPQ editor. If it asks you to overwrite anything, just go ahead and click yes. Please note that if you have a custom item DBC already as an MPQ, you might have to extract said MPQ first before actually making any change to the item DBC. After that, you can safely go ahead and close out Latix MPQ editor, and you are pretty much done. Make sure that your cache or WDB folder is deleted before you log back into the game and go ahead and restart your server if you still have it running. And it looks like we are successful. If you notice that your weapon has a question mark on it, it means that you didn't do something right with the DBC editor. So go back and make sure that you get that right. It's a good idea to go ahead and test all the functionality of the weapon to make sure that you did everything right. Looks like my buff works just fine. And I'm gonna smack a few things just to make sure that the chain lightning effect works as well. And it looks like it's successful. That was pretty quick. That's pretty much it for this guide. In the next guide, I'll be covering how to import custom models or retroported models from later expansions into the game so that you can use them as appearances for said item. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you on the other side of Azeroth.